curriculum design refers to the systematic arrangement of the elements of a curriculum within a course or program. Here, the educators or the planners take into consideration the following elements. Number one, intent, which contains the aims, goals, and objectives and visions a strategic plan which gives them a clear picture of how and when these goals are achieved by making use of the available sources. Number two, subject matter or content. This talks about a particular or specific content which covers the necessary skills and knowledge a learner should acquire which also is relevant to the science of the time. Number three, learning experiences. In here, the curriculum employs innovative and interactive learning activities or methodologies where the learners effectively engage and at the same time learn from those activities of which are still aligned in the curriculum. And finally, number four, evaluation, which purpose is to conduct an assessment and feedback which would be weighed into test the effectiveness of the curriculum. A lot of educational readings that confuse the readers the difference between a curriculum design and a curriculum organization. To web it off, Posner classified the activities of arranging curriculum into macro and micro levels of arranging curriculum contents. The former refers to the comprehensive view which can be broken down from philosophy to the contents of the different disciplines or simply refers to as functions of the curriculum design. While the latter is about sorting out the content of the specific discipline in short, it is the function of the curriculum organization. One thing you should have to take note is that the curriculum organization is dependent on the curriculum design such that curriculum design gives the life into the school or teacher's philosophy of education which is purposely enacted and vertically integrated. Hi, I am Micah, and now that you know what is curriculum design, I know that you are ready to learn the different types of curriculum design. But before that, always remember that the curriculum contains the knowledge and skills that the students needed to learn or master to move to the next phase. The curriculum designs are classified into four groups according to Murray Print in 1988. The following are Subject-Centered Design, Learner-Centered Design, Problem-Centered Design, and Core Learning Design. First, let us know the first curriculum design, the Subject-Centered Curriculum Design. This curriculum design revolves around a particular subject matter or discipline. It is the most popular among four types of curriculum designs. Subject-centered curriculum design describes what students need to study and how it should be studied. It focuses on the content of the curriculum. It is a variation which are focused on the individual subject, specific discipline, and a combination of subjects and broad field or interdisciplinary. It corresponds mostly to the textbook, text and usually written based on the specific subject or course. Fun fact! Henry Morrison and William Harris are the theories who believed in subject-centered design. Subject-centered design is practiced. We are allocated or teachers allocate ours for different scope of subjects. For example, one R for mathematics, one R for science, one R for history, and other subjects. We also practice this in our country, the Philippines, because school days is divided into class periods, school years, quarter, and semesters. Most of school who uses this subject-centered design aims for excellence and specific discipline content. What? This subject-centered design 
is not student-centered and is least concerned with indicating different learning style compared to other forms of curriculum design, which we can say can cause problems with student engagement and motivation and may even cause students to fall behind in class. This subject-centered design is classified into three specific design. First is the subject design, next academic disciplines design, and integrated design. Now let us know what is the subject design. Subject design is the oldest and the most familiar design for teachers, parents, and other laymen. This curriculum design is organized in terms of subjects like mathematics, science, Filipino, English, and other subjects. Most of the subjects that are offered in the elementary level. In this curriculum, subjects have nothing to do with other subjects or there is no connection between other subjects. It just emphasizes into the general knowledge of each subject. This subject design is a teacher-centered curriculum design because the learners are just the receiver of the information from the teachers. So it focuses mostly on the teachers and how they deliver the general knowledge about the subject of mathematics, the science, Filipino, or English. It has a very good advantage because it is easy to deliver for the teachers and the teachers are familiar with the format because they were educated using this curriculum design. Example of the subject design is that in elementary level, in grade 1, we have thought about the general knowledge about mathematics, the addition, subtraction, division, addition. In English, we have thought about nouns, verbs. In Filipino, we have thought about panlapi, unlapi, where we are thought about the general knowledge only without integrating or focusing deeply or learning deeply about the said discipline or subject. We have here the academic discipline design. So this design is related to subject design. However, subject design centers only on the cluster of content or the general knowledge, while the academic discipline design focuses on the specific knowledge and through a method which the scholars use to study a specific content of their fields, like the biology, algebra, earth science, economics, physics, chemistry, literature, economics, or Philippine history, and other disciplines. So this design is mostly used in the college level rather than the elementary or high school. So this academic discipline design curriculum moves higher to a discipline when students are more mature and are already moving towards their career path. So basically, basically in a college level. Wherein, as we are now in a college level, in a college level, there is a different curriculum per different courses because they are taking different disciplines. There is they are also focusing on different disciplines or learning different disciplines and different courses that they are taking. For example, in education, education students has different curriculum with the engineering students because their focuses in uh, students in education focuses on a different discipline, theories and learnings, while engineering also focuses on different discipline that inlines in engineering and their career path. We can also say that this academic discipline design curriculum is applicable in the senior high school because we have the ABM, UMS, and the STEM where there is a specific discipline that they are learning. In humanities, they are learning history, they are learning earth science, um, Philippine history, about everything about humanity while in ABM they are learning about accounting, business management and others. In science they are learning about 
they are learning about experimentation in science, biology, chemistry, and others. Now we have here, lastly, a subject-centered design is the integrated design. So this curriculum design is based on the principle that learners learn in an integrated manner. In this curriculum, teachers connect different areas of study by cutting across subject matter lines and emphasizing or unifying concepts. It focuses on making connection for students to allow themselves in engaging in relevant and meaningful activities that can be connected in real-life situations. Let us now understand the benefits and how effectively integrating curriculum design can help teachers and students become more successful in the classroom. So this type of curriculum design emerges two or more related subjects. So we have here three types of integration. First, the interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary or broad fields, and the core. Let us now discuss the three types of integration starting with the interdisciplinary integration. So this interdisciplinary integration includes the merging of two related disciplines or subjects, no more than two, only two related subjects. So teachers are integrating two related subjects, example, the science and health, mathematics and science which they believe or teachers believe that these two subjects are naturally integrated. For example, before we can generally know about health or more understand about health, we really need to understand the general knowledge about science. In science, we are learning about our body the functions of our body, the parts of our body, the basic knowledge about our body, our life, and how we grow, and in health, we learn about how to cure diseases in our body, which is the teachers are having a broad knowledge or more information about the topic that they are discussing because they are integrating two lessons or two subjects about the, the lesson which it allows students to have more information more chances of knowing or learning about the topic and more perspective about the lesson that the teachers or the curriculum is given them. In this interdisciplinary integration, the participation of the students are structured in unit of learning that is designed by the teachers to facilitate and integrate concepts and practices across specific disciplines. So in making this curriculum an integration, there will be more in motivation the students and developing their thinking and constructive construction of meaningful connections between these two disciplinary concepts. Next, we have here the multidisciplinary or broad fields. It includes integration of three or more related subjects. For example, of a multidisciplinary or broad field integration is, is social studies curriculum. So in this subject, there are related subjects or integrated subjects. For example, is the history, economics, geography, civics, and culture. These subjects are related to one another. So this curriculum design is, is used in making curriculum as integration in order to have more information to be taught to our students. As teachers, we don't only focus on one discipline but also we are teaching students other disciplines by means of integrating this discipline but make sure that these subjects that we are integrating into the subject or curriculum that we are using is really or have the connection because we cannot only put this subject because we think that it have a connection but it doesn't have. 
we can use theories or studies about our researchers about this before putting or integrating a subject on it. As the name of it, multidisciplinary or broad fields, it helps teachers to have a broad or have a bigger understanding about the lesson, especially the students of what we are going to teach to them and a wider perspective of studies and fields. In college, it is mostly used in social studies, physical education, integrating anatomy and physiology, exercise science, mathematics, and even health. It's the core integration. It requires that all subjects or disciplines in the school curriculum to be put together using a single theme. So in this curriculum, teachers organize curriculum around student questions and concerns and students also develop a life skill as they apply both the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary skills in a real-life context. So this type of design or integration as integrated curriculum design is used in a preschool where subjects are combined using a curriculum theme. For example, in a kindergarten, they are learning about a, their self, family, and community. And the single theme they are using is the theme about all about me, learning all about me wherein their activity in the curriculum is using an integration of the community, the family, and their self. Now, we have another curriculum design, the second of them, the learner-centered design. So this design centers learner and the education process. The emphasis is very, very strong on elementary level. However, more concern has been placed on the secondary and the content and the college in the discipline and center. But both levels still recognizes the importance of the learner in the curriculum. Unlike the subject center design, this design takes its individual needs and interest and goal into consideration. It acknowledges that students are not uniform and adjust to their students' needs. This curriculum, the instructional plans, our learner-centered curriculum are differentiated. Then the students have differences in learning styles and learning approaches. So the aim of this learner-centered design is to develop the potential and abilities of learners and making the curriculum relevant and responsive to their needs and to their context. But if there is an advantage, there is also a disadvantage. In making this curriculum possible, there is a need for the teachers to provide a variety of experiences for the learners to have a better understanding about the context of the lesson varying on their learning styles and differ in their learning approaches in the different students. Also, it considers the inner self of the learners by providing tasks that they can develop themselves as the ultimate objective of the learning process. There are two types of learner-centered design. It is the activity or experience design and the humanistic design. So first, let us discuss the activity experience design. So in this design, teachers or curriculum makers need to create activities that are meaningful and interesting in order to increase the motivational aspect or motivational aspect of the students. By doing the activities that are created by the teachers or in either communication, thinking skills, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, and creativity that are very important in the learners. Where in this activity, it is more focused on the students. For example, the activity and the curriculum is made for the students to develop skills by means of collaboration with their peers, their classmates, their teachers, and the community. For the curriculum makers and this activity experience design, they really need to focus on effort 
on giving a activity that is relevant to the context of the students and increase their level of participation in order to have a effective and well-developed skills. As per example, in a physical education curriculum, it is more focused on giving activities for the learners in order to develop their skills, giving them activities that suits their needs and increases their level of motivation and participation in the class. Next, we have here the humanistic design. So this curriculum is composed of topics and learning experiences that focuses on the holistic development of an individual. The goal of this design is to develop a well-rounded individual. So in this design, it doesn't only focus on one skill, but it focuses on developing a child holistically. So this design is focusing on the development of self as the ultimate objective of learning. It focuses and stresses on the whole person and the integration of not only thinking but also feeling and doing. In this curriculum, teachers should have activities that help students to discover who they are, not just shaping them or developing their skills, but shaping them into a well-rounded individual. For example, a MAPI curriculum that the ultimate goal of the MAPI curriculum is to develop the holistic development of a learner, not just developing its thinking skill, valuable skills, badminton skills, but also learning on how to interact or participate with the community and with itself and the peers. So by this activities given in the curriculum using the humanistic design, it creates a well-rounded individual and a learner who is developed holistically. Another type of curriculum design is the problem-centered design. So this curriculum design mostly focuses on understanding and finding solution to individual and social issues and problems. They require students to use their skills and knowledge of different subjects and disciplines as they engage themselves in a meaningful learning of various social and individual problems like poverty, climate change, peace and order, or terrorism, diseases, traffic, and economic recession, among others. Focus on the problems of living on the perceived realities of institutional group life for the individual and the society in general. This curriculum or problem-centered design are organized to reinforce cultural traditions and also to address those community and social needs that are currently unmet. For example, in senior high school in the Philippine context, we have researches, we have action plans that are made, even business plans. So this research is part of this problem-centered design that is made by our faculty members or teachers in order for us or in order to develop learners' capability and skills in finding solutions into issues and problems of the societies that are unmet. In our researches, we are thought and while we do research, we learn about what the society needs and what should we put upon it to have it resolved. And also, at the end, we have this suggestions, resolutions, and others. There are two types of problem-centered design. First is the thematic design and second is the problem design. So what is thematic design? This design suggests the thematic approach to integration. It is similar to multidisciplinary or broad field design, which focuses on integrating basic disciplines like reading, mathematics, science, with the exploration of other broad subjects like communities, rainforests, river basins, or the use of energy, and others. 
It promotes a higher quality learning through engaging topics or integrating topics, and it's sequence to provide learners a clear framework of their progression in skills and knowledge to be better equip children for the next stage of their education. In this design, themes can be either the concept, guided questions, activities, or standards in skills, but the main purpose and goals are all intended to provide an education that is holistic, meaningful, and relevant to the life of the learner. It encourages the involvement of students to topics that are relevant to them, wherein the learners are able to relate what is being asked to them to the real-world experiences and build on their prior knowledge of a topic. In creating this design, you teachers can teach in different learning styles of their students, giving them activities and questions that they can think critically and connect to the real-life situations. Next, we have here the problem design. The problem design is a design that where the learners are exposed to different lessons and problem solving involving the real life problems. In this curriculum design, teachers or faculty members are creating activities that enables the learners to create or solve a problem either in society or into their community. Some activities include practical situations or issues about the community. For example, thesis, action plan, wherein they are going to research about the problem or to learn about facts on the problem that they are going to reserve, resolve rather, and provide a solution or recommendation about the problem in their society or their community. Lastly, we have the core learning design as last curriculum design. So this curriculum design focuses more on learning a set of common subjects, discipline courses, skills or knowledge that is necessary for students to master or to learn. What it aims is to have a uniform type of education based on a certain philosophy or educational theory. It aims to provide an education that is transformative and relevant to all types of learners and to develop a habit of mind or cultivate the critical and creative thinking of students that they can employ in their everyday life. So there are two types of core learning design. First is the core design. So this core design is a set of common subjects, disciplines, or cores that are required for students to study before they graduate or move to a different level. So it is like a progression. For example, in a grade one, they are learning the basic mathematics, English, or Filipino. In secondary, they are learning more broader about the English and Filipino. In a college, there is more disciplines that is integrated into the studies. Third than that, in college or in elementary, before you can proceed to grade two, you can you really need to get over or to learn and study the required subjects that are given to you in order for you to have a prior knowledge about the subject before proceeding into grade two. That is why from grade 1 to grade 6 until in college we have mathematics but it differs on the different level and taking or the subject. What I've said earlier, in grade 1 you have taking basic mathematics learning, the addition, subtraction, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In high school you will learn some general mathematics. In college you will learn algebra. And statistics, it is just like a progression of curriculum contents. Level by level, you are moving forward into different levels of subject but is connected to each other. Lastly, we have the National Core Curriculum Design. So this curriculum design is a set of subjects or courses that are required to be taught to all students across the country. It is prescribed by the state through Department of Education or in the college level commission in higher education. 
example of core subjects in both elementary and secondary includes languages, the mathematics, science, ICT, and physical education and arts. While on the general education curriculum in the Philippines, the core subjects are understanding the self, the contemporary world, purposive communication, art appreciation, ethics, reading in Philippine history, mathematics in the modern world, science and technology, and society, and the mandatory subject of the life and works of national hero Jose Rizal, which we are taking right now in the college level, where all college students are taking no matter what college department are you in. Another example of a national core curriculum design are the general education curriculum for undergraduate courses and the K-12 curriculum for basic education. So what I have said, the undergraduate courses earlier are the subjects or the nine core subjects and general education curriculum in the Philippines. Hi, I am Van Dominic Dati, the one who will discuss about things to consider in designing curriculum. Now we have two major forces to be considered upon designing curriculum. They are the horizontal organization and vertical organization. But before we will talk about the difference of these two, why do we consider such forces as horizontal and vertical in organizing curriculum? Well. It is simply because they affect and they serve as the arrangement of elements in the curriculum. Without recognizing the curriculum being arranged horizontally or vertically, there is a high tendency that the students will be confused on the relationship and progression of concepts as well as they might be misguided with the topics and learning experiences that they will undergo. Now what is or are the differences between horizontal and vertical organization in curriculum? Horizontal curriculum is the blending or combination of curriculum elements like the subject matters or disciplines. Imagine having different words or subjects being written on the board separately and horizontally. They are in linear formation which tells you that the terms are all equal and unique. So what you're going to do is find the relationship between and among these concepts. For example, you see the words phonics, reading, spelling, and writing. You begin to observe and realize that these terms are interrelated with each other as they are separate concepts but they all make up and create communication arts. On the other hand, vertical curriculum is the sequencing or progression of curriculum elements. Try to think of different words being arranged in a vertical manner from top to bottom and vice versa. These terms should be with relevance and in a progressive manner, so what you are going to do is understand how and why one term is above or below the other. For example, you think of the words Philippine history, Asian history, and world history. You start to absorb and conclude that there is a progression as to the level of difficulty among these concepts. In reality, the Philippine history is taught in grade 7, Asian history is taught in grade 8, and the world history is taught in grade 9. In vertical curriculum, learners are taught from simple to complex concepts. All in all, horizontal and vertical organization play a vital role in curriculum design However, I would like to emphasize that no one is better than the other. They are just arrangements which are often, if not always, both present at the same time. Do you now get the difference between the two and why they should be considered in designing curriculum? That's all and be sure to remember. 
we are now down to the last topic which is the sequencing curriculum content. When we said sequencing in curriculum, it is the sequence includes plans and materials for learning experiences to support and extend children's learning at various levels of development. And according to PRINT 1993, sequencing curriculum content is essential in curriculum design. Sequence is defined as the order in which contents are presented in the learners. PRINT also identified the following design principles that are most commonly used to sequence the curriculum contents. There are the simple to complex, prerequisite learning, chronology, whole to part learning, and increasing abstraction. First, we have the simple to complex. It is a type of sequencing method requiring organization of the content from easy to difficult. Example, teach how to spell short words in the language class before the long words. Second, we have the prerequisite in learning. This principle is followed in subjects and courses that largely consist of laws and principles like geometry, algebra, and physics. To understand the laws and principles, students should learn the basic prerequisite knowledge and concepts. Third, the chronology. It is a type of sequencing method requiring to teach a simple component skills of the content before moving more complex skills. Example, learners need to know how to add before they can understand the concept of multiplication in math class. Fourth, we have the whole to part learning. It is a type of sequencing method requiring organization of the contents from general to specific. For example, teach the concept of database before teaching the specific types of databases such as hierarchical or relational. Last, we have the increasing abstraction. It is a type of sequencing method requiring organization of the content from concrete and physical to abstract and symbolic. For example, start with presenting geometric tangible objects before teaching the rules or theorems about the geometric objects.